Hello radio enthusiasts, welcome to another video from the Roaring Twenties Antique Radio Museum. In this video we will be investigating the history of the most famous radio company in history, the Radio Corporation of America, more commonly known as RCA. The story of RCA begins in 1919, but why it exists began two decades before that with the founding of another company. Marconi Wireless Telegraph Company of America in 1899. The company was a subsidiary of the British Marconi Company and owned the United States patent rights to Guglielmo Marconi's wireless telegraphy patents. Over time, it built a large network of land-based and shipboard wireless telegraphy or telegraph stations. In 1912, it acquired the assets of the bankrupt United Wireless Telegraph Company. At the time, United Wireless was the largest wireless telegraph communications company in the United States, with 70 land and 400 ship-based telegraph stations. A stock fraud scheme by its leaders and the following criminal investigations and lawsuits led to its bankruptcy. With the Marconi Wireless Telegraph Company's takeover of the company, complete control of the American wireless communication was, for the first time, in a foreign country's hands. This was very upsetting to the United States government. In 1919, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, who was Secretary of the Navy at the time, encouraged General Electric's President Owen D. Young to form a privately owned corporation. Young formed a new business entity and named it the Radio Corporation of America, which later became RCA. The newly formed company would acquire the assets of the American Marconi subsidiary of British Marconi Company. Over the next two years, RCA would close deals on cross-licensing of patents with General Electric, Westinghouse, AT&T, and the United Fruit Company. Those agreements would give RCA control of nearly all the radio patents that had been issued at the time. RCA was a patent trust and a government-sanctioned monopoly. GE President Owen DeYoung would become the first chairman of RCA. Noted early radio expert and author Alan Douglas includes RCA in his three-book series titled Radio Manufacturing of the 1920s. The reality is that RCA did not manufacture a single radio in the 1920s. The company didn't build its first manufacturing plant until 1930 when it formed RCA Radiotron Incorporated. Before then, RCA was a distributor of radios and related parts. RCA would put its name on the products made by companies under its patent trust, like General Electric and Westinghouse. Shortly after RCA was formed, it began filing patent infringement lawsuits against manufacturers that were violating the patents it now controlled. One of those patents was filed against Elmer T. Cunningham and the company he founded in 1915, the Audiotron Sales Company. Cunningham's tubes were quite a bit different from most other tubes with its cylindrical design and dual filaments, giving the tube a longer life than others. Instead of giving into RCA demands, Cunningham decided to fight the lawsuit. Elmer Cunningham had a personal license from Lee DeForest to make and sell radio tubes. Traveling to New York, Elmer Cunningham was very confident in his legal position, but the court decided otherwise and ruled that while DeForest himself had a personal license to sell radio tubes, he did not have the right to issue personal licenses to others. Feeling bad for his friend, Lee DeForest arranged for Cunningham to continue to sell radio tubes under his personal license. At this point, RCA decided to settle with Cunningham on June 15, 1920. Under the agreement, Cunningham would no longer manufacture radio tubes and RCA would sell unlabeled, heavily discounted tubes to Cunningham until 1925, which Cunningham would sell under his own name. Audiotron Sales Company stopped manufacturing tubes in 1920 for the agreement. RCA's original purpose was to operate and expand wireless communication or telegraphy worldwide. That changed in 1921 when broadcast radio began its explosive growth and by the end of 1922 over 500 broadcast radio stations had been established. RCA quickly moved to expand its broadcasting activities. In the fall of 1921, RCA set up its first full-time broadcasting station, the short-lived WDY at the company's Roselle Park, New Jersey plant. WDY was on the air for just eight weeks, beginning December 15, 2021, and ending all broadcasting on February 17, 1922. 
Two years later, RCA was operating three stations, WJZ and WJY in New York City and WRC in Washington, D.C. During that time, AT&T had become a major player in radio broadcasting by establishing the first radio network. AT&T's limits and other radio broadcasters' use of its telephone lines raised a backlash against the company, and antitrust lawsuits were in the process of being filed against it because of those limits. Fearing the damage to their reputation, AT&T decided to leave the broadcasting business in 1926, selling its radio network to a group headed by RCA. In 1927, RCA formed the NBC Red Network and the NBC Blue Network. The two networks would exist under RCA's control until October of 1943, when the FCC succeeded in forcing RCA to sell one of the networks. The NBC Blue Network would be sold, and three years later it would be renamed the American Broadcasting Company, known today as ABC. The NBC Red Network would remain under RCA's control with a new name, the National Broadcasting Company, more commonly referred to as NBC. In 1922, while RCA was moving into broadcasting, its associated companies Westinghouse and General Electric began expanding their manufacturing of radio receivers for the home and sold them under the RCA name. RCA's 1922 catalog, Radio Enters the Home, signaled RCA's intent to be a major player in radios for the general public. As the number of radio stations skyrocketed, the public's demand for radio receivers followed and sales of RCA-labeled radios accelerated. In 1924, RCA introduced the first superheterodyne receivers, the Radiola Super 8 and the portable Radiola Superheterodyne the term portable being used in its loosest possible definition. Weighing in at 40 pounds with batteries, you would have to be Arnold Schwarzenegger to consider it a true portable. For a few years, RCA's associated companies were the leading seller of radios until things changed in 1925. During that year, Atwater Kent Radio Company became the largest manufacturer of radios and would end the decade as the largest seller of radios in the 1920s. In 1929, RCA acquired the Victor Talking Machine Company of Camden, New Jersey. The company was the world's largest manufacturer of phonographs and records. The acquisition would include Victor subsidiaries, Victor Company of Japan, and the Gramophone Company Limited in England. The Victor Company of Japan would later become JVC, and the Gramophone Company Limited would evolve into EMI Records. The acquisition of the Victor Talking Machine Company would forever change the public face of RCA. With Victor's acquisition, RCA gained the rights to Victor's, his master's voice trademark. RCA would use the trademark up until a failing company was later purchased and broken up, beginning in 1985. During the 1920s, RCA's associated companies manufactured a large number of radios, including some top sellers like the Radiola 3. Many of these radios are still prized by antique radio collectors today. RCA was one of the biggest and most important companies in radio history. The Radio Corporation of America no longer exists, but its place in history is secure. That's it for this video. There will be more to come as we continue to investigate the early history of the world's first mass medium, radio. Thanks for watching.